do the evaluation at the end of class. Uh, and we'll do one of two things. I don't know. <laughs> this is meant to be a choice. It's not meant to be a threat. <laughs> All right. But um, one thing I would like to do <coughs> is discuss uh, and, and, and answer uh, any questions that you have about either your assignments or your project. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's option one. If there aren't any questions and concerns and you're all just waiting to turn it in, you know, and <laughs> yeah, you're, you know, yeah you're, you're, you're holding back just because, you know, you don't want to overwhelm me all at once. Uh, then we can talk about the use of uh, Ajax in the .NET platform. So, um, we'll play it by ear. And then uh, Thursday we'll do probably a similar thing. You know, address your questions. Because that, first and foremost, is, is what I want to get through. If we can get into talking a little bit about Ajax, that's great. If not, well, uh, that's, that's okay. Uh, it's more important, I think. Pardon me? What is Ajax? Ajax is a more sophisticated way of the client and server to interact. In other words, typically when we think of a client-server interaction, we think of a client making a request, the server processing it, doing whatever it needs to do, and might involve server-side scripting or whatever, then sending a response back to the client, and then it's the client's ball from there on in. And we might have some client-side code to do like mouse overs or whatever, but the server doesn't get involved until the user or the client requests another page, then the whole cycle starts again. That's kind of a clunky interaction. That's the kind of the traditional way that web applications have, have interacted. With Ajax applications um, on the web, the client and server interacts in a more natural, sophisticated sort of way. Um, so let's show an example. The classic example for a lot of these is what you get with Google. So if we were, go, if we were to go and open Google, up and start typing, we'll notice there's a separate class for just well, well, we'll get to that in a second. Notice as we go in and we type Going to the Google search engine. As we type, let's say we type P, it shows me the top search item that starts with a P. I type in PH, it shows me the top thing that starts with PH. P, it shows me the top for PHP. Let's think about this for a second. Obviously, if you, if you, well, maybe not so obviously, but if you look closely at this, you'll realize that the page is not completely reloading. In other words, when you refresh a page, you notice a little flicker of the page, even on a fast connection. That means it's redrawing, the browser's redrawing the whole page. So with this, notice as we're typing, there's no flicker. That drop down box just sort of appears. And the rest of the page doesn't flicker. So from that, we can conclude that it's not doing a traditional request to the server because it's not redrawing the whole page. Remember, a traditional request to the server requires the client to redraw the page. So it's not doing that. So therefore, we have to conclude that something's going on client side. All right. If we think about it a little bit more, though, do you think that downloaded with the initial web page was the entire Google database of every possible search term. Obviously not, right? In other words, the functionality, the fact that the first ranking search that begins with P is Pinterest, and then Pandora, and then PNC, Pizza Hut, Papa John's, implies that that information comes from the server, because there's no way that that, that that information could be sent to the client. So we have sort of a dilemma 
uh, in, the, in this case if we try to view it from the perspective of a traditional, traditional web page. It's obvious that the client is not requesting a complete web page. The client is just updating a portion of the page. It's updating this portion. And yet it's quite clear that it's getting some information from the server. And that, in a nutshell, is what AJAX is. It's a more sophisticated way of the client and server interacting such that the client doesn't request an entire page from the web server. The client simply requests a piece of data from the server. And then when it gets that piece of data back, it updates the page. All right? And it can update just a portion of the page without having to redraw the whole page. So it's a more natural sort of interaction. It makes uh, web pages act more like, say, a desktop application would. All right? And that, in a nutshell, is what uh, PHP is. I'm sorry, not PHP, but Ajax is. All right. I know, Jim, did you get your question resolved about the query and subquery? Because that was an interesting question. Yeah, I fixed it before I was done with it. Okay, great. Great. I wasn't wanting to ask you about doing inserts in the grid view. I'm not sure if you did an example on that or not, but I know you used to make a template in the field and go to a quarter template. Question Doing inserts in the grid view, how do you do them? This one has a real quick answer. You don't. <laughs> There's no build-in facility to do an insert. I can't build it in, but I was Googling it. And basically, people basically make the command line into a grid view and then insert it into the yeah, can, can, can people do it? Is, uh, yeah, the question is, is, is it worth it? And I would argue no. If I wanted to do inserts into a grid view, this is, this is how I would handle it. All right? And uh, if, if, you don't, if you'd rather handle it a different way, go for it. Go, you know, feel free to, to Google it and, and use that. But let's take a look at something simple. My computer is at risk. Um, let's look. All right, not that one. Here's a faculty list example. Yeah, we'll look at this one. Just for laughs, I'm going to do one from scratch. I'm just going to do a real simple table that has a couple of fields just so that we can um, do this quickly. This gets to be one of those questions where we've talked about, we, we've talked about this sort of question before that um, the, the, the default behavior isn't to do some functionality, and yet you want to do it. What do you do? Do you try to shoehorn that functionality to do it into the existing framework? Maybe. The other thing that you could do is just you know, do it on your own. And, and that's really essentially the two choices. This is one case where I prefer to do it on my own. I don't really see any advantage of making it part of the, the grid view. But well, what the heck? You know, I'm, I guess it could work. I'm not sure why they, they have a, in the, in the properties, they have a thing to where you can show the insert button, and it shows new, where it's like you can add something, but there's nothing code that takes it. They describe it, I guess, and they build a four-door car, and they include it. <laughs> Probably the thought is, is that you could then write code to, like, send it to another page to insert it, it would be my guess of, of what, they would, uh, what, what they were doing with that. You know, they give you that hook into it, even though, even though the, the full-blown functionality isn't there. All right, let's go in and let's create something just for the faculty rank description table. So I'll go in and I'll create a new file. And we'll call it 
call this faculty rank or frank, either one. And I'll go in and I will make my Say, what am I not seeing? I'll go in and put my grid view here. And I'll put my SQL data source here. All right. I'll go in, configure my data source. And I'll go and pick faculty rank, pick those two fields. I'll click advanced to say generate, insert, update, and delete. We'll order by the description just for good measure. Test the query. Finish. We'll go and choose our data source for this. And we will enable editing and deleting. And we should have our faculty rank page. This should be nothing new. Now the question is, what if we want to incorporate an insert into this uh, of those two fields? would do it, then we'll look at the way that they're probably right. So that works so far. Here we go. And we can edit and delete. Now we deleted it. We could edit this one. Notice full professor is full F U L L and not F O O L. All right. There's a different rank for that. All right. Now, the way I would handle this is I would go, if I wanted to do an insert onto the same page, what I would do is I would drag a couple of text boxes over. And a button. All right. Now, I'd probably also put the labels on it and all that. I'm in the interest of time, I'm, I'm skipping that. Uh, and I put validation in there. But then I would go in and I would, let's see. Put code in that button. If, if is valid, I'd create my new data source. Insert into faculty rank. Faculty rank. Faculty rank description. There's my two parameters. Try my insert. I don't want to redirect in this case. If there's an error, I'll display my error on the screen. Oops. All right. 
So now if you go and do this, if we enter our faculty rank, we can go in here and enter a new faculty rank. mistake I have to I have to make it refresh yeah I probably need to do that too although actually I think it's based on position so they're just named incorrectly I don't think that would hurt it Do grid view one dot. I think I just need to say data bind. We'll check that out. Let me make this a default page. Because it inserted it, it just didn't refresh the grid. We'll see test in a minute here. See there. All right, there we go, by doing the data bind. So that's the, that's the way that I would do it. Again, is that the right way? I don't know, but that's the way I would do it. The way I would suspect they would do it, and it's probably going to end up like to be not terribly different. All right, let's go and let's try to do it the way they would do it. Um, let's, let me think. You said make some templates. So I'll go here. And I'll edit this. And I'll make each one of these a template field. All right. Then I'm going to go and edit the templates. And I can put my insert button here if I want or an insert link. Whoops, I put that in the header I want. I actually want that in the footer. Then I can go into the other two templates and put text boxes there. Let's just see what we have. I know it's not going to work. I probably am not showing footers, so let's go and turn those on. And already I'm in trouble, all right, because I wasn't getting the, the footer to display. 
But in essence, that's what you'd do. You'd go in and you'd make a template and all that. In my mind, this is a more involved process than the path I would take you. We're still so, we're almost there, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, I imagine it wouldn't take a lot to polish this off, but again, I would just as soon do it the, the way that I did it initially. Um, let's, let's Google real quick and, and see why it's not showing the footer. Include a footer in the there, there, set. So now we should have the, yeah, with the insert showing, okay. Um, what we have to do then is go back and set the bindings on that to the um, appropriate. Again, I have to say, okay, you can't set the bindings on that. You'd probably end up writing code a lot like I did, where you'd go and you'd pull it and you'd create that. Or maybe there's something I'm missing. At any rate, that's the general approach that you would take, and then you'd write the code behind for the button to go off and fire it off and do it. Uh, again, it may, it may, be, may be my own familiarity or lack of familiarity with some of the pieces of the framework, but that's why I would, I would do it in, in that manner. And, and it seems to get the same effect with... Uh, and it seems to me to be easier, but if you want to try that in lab, I'll, I'll be glad to give you a hand working through that particular example. All right? <laughs> you don't want to try it in lab. You just want to go with the easier. Yeah. yeah. The only question was, I guess, edit, edit fields in the, when you do the, um, the column. Uh-huh. You can turn on the insert button. Oh, okay. Let's see. When we go to edit column, for which um, the template field we can go and say insert visible. Insert visible doesn't turn on the. It should be a command field where the command, like command field, like things where it's like edit and delete. 
Uh -huh. Oh, and then it has an insert too. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Show edit, show insert button false. Okay, so yeah, we'll show new now. All right. Let's see what that does when you click it. Nothing, right? Yeah, you'd have to write you'd have to write code to go and and do that. Probably what you'd do is when you click that, you would write code to set the footer visible so that you'd get that. In other words, you do you do this. Yeah. Yeah, and then you do insert code. Um, you know, you probably have long given up on, on this one, but now I find this interesting, so I, I, you know, I have to take a few minutes to look at it. Right. Right, right. Well, I, you know. Yeah. Right. that. Okay, click. Now we can say grid view one dot show footer equals true. So now we'd go all right, we click that, boom, it shows the footer and you can go and do the insert. Now the one thing I haven't done is gone and closed the loop of writing the code for the insert. I would imagine, well, let me back up on that. I, I, I oh. Yeah, I would think. <laughs> All right, let's go into the template here. For not this one, for the other one, or this one. Okay, there we go. And we could probably say grid view one dot. No, no, I don't want to do insert. I want to do SQL data source one dot insert. Now, the only thing I don't think I've done, I don't think I have set the parameters for that. I don't think it would work yet. So I would have to go in and set the parameters, tie the text boxes to those two fields. The first thing you do is you make a link box and then you make the text box. Yeah, well, that, that's what I have. If we look at the template, yeah. I, I have a button instead of a link. I have, in the footer template, I have a text box. Then I have another one. What I have to be able to do is associate that footer template with the field. And I don't see a bindings. That's not to say that I couldn't. Um, but anyhow, that's the last step of the puzzle that I'm not really sure how to do. You'd have to bind those text boxes yeah, to, to those two properties or write your own insert or, or whatever. But at any rate, yeah. And, and that, that raises a good point just in principle that you have the framework, the framework has certain capabilities. Those capabilities can be stretched and those capabilities can be changed. 
But there's always going to be the point where you look at it and say, you know what, that's stretching it too far. It's easier for me just to do it yourself. And I'm not even saying this is necessarily one of those. Maybe after I spend a few minutes looking at this, um, in fact, I'll make a note to myself to spend a few minutes looking at this, um, I'll say, oh, you know, that's a great way to do it. Maybe just because I haven't done it that way before, I'm not really familiar with it. On the other hand, maybe it's like, well, you know, I'll stick with the way that I know, and then that way will work. So you kind of have to make that call. Uh, but, yeah, that's a good, great question. Other questions? Project or? Question. Uh -huh. How are we going to execute that without being on Visual Studio? Like in general, I mean, web, web design, yeah. we have the HTML file that we can just right. click it and it's then executed. How, about how, you, how, how do you deploy it? The same way. You move, you, you would have to move, you'd have to do a couple things. First thing you'd have to do, the question is how do I deploy a .NET application? Uh, first of all, you'd have to have a, a web server, an IIS web server that was running the proper framework of ASP.NET. All right. Um, and then you would copy the files to the, uh, to the web server in the appropriate folder uh, for that. And the last thing you'd have to do is you'd have to make sure that folder was defined as a, as a web application. There's a little checkbox within IIS that would allow you to do it. Um, let's see if IIS is running here. Because if it is, I can demonstrate that. If not, maybe I can demonstrate that one in lab. Okay. This, does, this isn't running a web server, so I can't demonstrate that. But I'll try demonstrating that in lab. Other questions? All right. Evaluation time. Um, I'll turn off this so as the rest of the world doesn't really need to hear 